meeting 33 taking place on African soil in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. My name is Advocate Zanyue Tatisi Asare, cyber lawyer, tech entrepreneur, CEO of Digital Legal, and member of the UNECA IGF Task Force. Rural communities have long been expected to benefit from information and communication technologies. In the 21st century, however, the reverse has proven true. Knowledge spills have fueled urbanization and drawn drop seekers to big cities, widening the divide between urban and rural communities. Recent technology and decentralized social behaviors have begun to buck this tendency. A major reason is rural communities struggle to maintain affordability given this pace at which digital um, transformation occurs, especially in regions of high density and income. Internet and broadband infrastructure policies are not aligned with rural community requirements. In developing countries, the focus is no longer on the haves and have nots, but rather on the extent of the use of edge, decentralized technologies, and diverse use patterns across communities. The global conversation has focused on the so-called digital gap between developed and undeveloped countries, failing to leverage the benefits of ongoing technological revolutions. This is what is believed to contribute to the disadvantage of developed communities in a transforming, transforming world. Data is obscure and is not giving the right information to create relevant, real solutions. Today, I am going to be your uh, moderator for this session, uh, joined by my colleague, Lily Edom um, Voce. And um, yeah, so I think what we'll do is we'll start the, the conversation. So what I just did was just to draw the background and the image of what today's discussion is going to about going to be about, um, we've got. Uh, I'd like to actually thank Mr. Wisdom Donko for this conversation, and then we'll have an opening remark by uh, um, Professor Lee McKnight. Please take the floor. All yours. Uh, thanks so much. It's a privilege to be here, and I thank you all for attending uh, this session to discuss uh, the needs of the urban and rural poor uh, that are living, as you know far better than me, uh, at the edge or beyond the edge of connectivity today. Uh, we're privileged to have the opportunity to try to make some contributions towards overcoming uh, these gaps through uh, new innovations that alone will not resolve the problem, but through partnerships and collaboration, perhaps can begin to change this uh, false dichotomy between where there can be connectivity and where there cannot. Because in fact, what we have in the room here can provide connectivity on 95% of the planet. The only place I can't promise to connect within a few minutes is the North and South Pole. Um, Am I go into my slides or that's later? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So this town hall is brought to you by African Open Data and Internet Research Foundation and Syracuse University School of Information Studies in the United States of America with the, with the goal of looking beyond the declarations on the digital gap and uh, considering current policy issues the effects of the standpoint of people's welfare and development objectives of the rural and urban poor. Um, so as I mentioned, I'll be your on-site moderator, and we'll start with a case study um, that will be presented to us by Kweku Antwi, Director and Programs, Director of Programs and Outreach of African Open Data and Internet Research. Um, and then that will be followed by Dr. Ephraim Kwaadu, Senior Lecturer of ICT, lecture, uh, ICT at the University of Education in Ghana, um, speaking on the role of internet and transformation, education and developing nations. And then a solution will be presented by E. McKnight, Associate Professor at School of Information Studies, Circus University, United States, looking at how we how um, the rural and urban impoverished communities and developing nations can effectively deploy cost-effective networks. So I'm going to open the floor up to you, 
um, Kweku, just to give us your topic, connectivity, agriculture, digitalization, and innovation, the situation in developing and rural communities. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Zaniwe, and good morning, good evening to everybody. Well, and I, I would like to just take a moment to have the that is coming. So, I, I would like to start off one of the main pillars when we're looking at rural connectivity and you know, aligning to um, the sectors that are important to us. All right. So one of the main things that when we look at technologies and internet connectivity is to be able to connect people and to also to be able to improve. And it's important that whilst we are connecting the policies, the regulations, and the structures which are in place speak to the people who are in the grassroots, and they are also able to use it. What we see quite happening often is that folks in the rural areas are often left out in terms of the connectivity. And even when they are connected, the quality of the connectivity becomes an issue. The main point of this focus is policy, how it speaks to their needs and wants. Today, we are living in a world which is really connected, but for folks to be able to utilize this connectivity for their um, livelihoods, for example, what, what, what the topic we have here, agriculture. How rural folk, a lot of us to be able to these times of um, globalization where we depend on other foods from um, across the world. You've seen that the break our value chain is affecting us. So what are we talking about? If I live in a rural place, I'm unable to connect to the internet and I, I want to be able to sell something, my produce, out to the people. It becomes a problem for me, but if I'm also able to connect to the internet by myself, creating that network, and also enabling my people in my environment to also um, connect to the internet, it helps them to also have the skill, it helps them to also have the skill. Because you see, very often when we talk from the high level about um, the connectivity trickling down, which is not really something which happens, and we're going to talk about the solutions today. If I'm able to set up a network in my area, I would know that I'm planting tomatoes, my friend is planting um, pineapples, and we need to take it to the city center. Um, once I'm able to have that network, once I'm able to set up, whether it's a page, it's a blog, or whatever it is, my people can be able to broadcast it. And also, that skill set, my community. Once that skills they say to do my community, we're able to spare all them be. Because in our African developing nation, what really happens much is that small scale farmers who are formed into consortium who are able to feed a scale markets. But the most important thing is that when they get a skill and they're able to be empowered, they connect to the larger community in our countries or in the, over the continent. But most of the times, our spectrum policy doesn't empower small groups to be able to connect because of the gap in infrastructure and they are looking at big telcos, big IS. What we would showcase here today is the ability for you to set up your own network, give the skills to your people in the country, or wherever vicinity you find yourself. And also market and make money. Because that's what we are all about. Once we're empowered and we have this skill set to give people. Those, those, those are from Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that, Koku. So I'm going to open the floor up to the second case study. And this is by Dr. Ephraim Kwa Edu, a senior lecturer at the University of Education in Ghana, with the topic, The Role of the Internet in Transforming Education in Developing Nations. The floor is yours.
Um, not really. If you could just maybe give us a second for our tech team to perhaps uh, increase the volume, if that's possible. Let's try again. How's your day today? Well, thank you. Um, tech team, is it possible to increase volume? Uh, he's he's quite faint, not too audible on our side. Okay, I think let's try again. Is it possible for you to get closer to your microphone? Could you try that for us? Okay, so we're going to practice our listening skills today. I think you can go ahead. Um, uh, so, yes, yeah, the floor is all yours. So we're looking forward to... Okay, please go ahead. Thank you. Obviously, due to the um, nature of the transmission, we had to reduce physical human to human contact. And so the question was to um, change education in a way where teachers can communicate with students, students can communicate with each other without necessarily transmitting uh, the virus. So in Ghana, March, schools were closed down, and at that time, we had only six cases in, in um, this country. Now, um, Human Rights Watch has said that many children received no education after March. Uh, there were no instructions, no feedback, no interaction with teachers. And UNESCO is also quoted to say that 9.8 million African students experienced some level of disruption to their parents. Now, here is the case we have about 24% of our population having access to internet which is a, a big problem. And even for those who have, connectivity is very patchy, it's poor, and it's expensive. And even if you have internet, there are cases where you do have frequent power interruptions. So the electricity goes up and your, internet, uh, your connectivity is cut off. Now I just have a, a, a brief look at um, what I have on the screen now. Um, the uh, median speeds of internet in this country for mobile is about 8 megabit per second and 7.9 megabit per second. Not too bad, but it's probably not the best as some people can get 200, 300 megabit per second in certain countries. For fixed broadband, the highest you can get for download speeds or the, uh, the average you can get for download speeds is around 28 megabit per second, which is also not too bad, but again, by no means in the, in the higher ranges. Now, during the COVID era, these were some of the speeds that we were able to sample. In certain areas, we were able to get as low as 0 0.05 megabit per second. And in some areas, 0 0.3, which is obviously poor. You can use it to stream video, and even downloading a file using these speeds will take you ages. So these were sample of speeds that we took from various locations around the country. Now, the response by government to COVID was to shut down schools, use internet, various LMSs, usually for the education tertiary space, and radio and TV lectures for the secondary and the, the primary space, and then the kindergarten. Of course, even at the tertiary level, where we're supposed to have a lot of infrastructure, it was very varied because different universities have different capabilities. Now, the idea to use radio and TV was because it requires only electricity. And you don't require internet. And you also 
uh, they also wanted to ensure broad-based access to learning content around the country. Now, the learning space for the tertiary, like I said earlier on, was to use various learning management platforms, e-learning basically. Some were using WhatsApp, some were using Telegram, and various other uh, web-based tools. Now, I did a, a brief focus group discussion with my students in education administration and then um, psychology, postgraduate students. And these were some of the responses. These are students who are actually in, in service teachers, so they are actually on the field from various parts of the country. Now, though there's a vibrant radio industry in this country, and we're talking about hundreds of radio stations, not all the stations relay the content. As a matter of fact, the Ghana Education Service only partnered the state-owned radio uh, service, so that we have just about 10, a little over 10 stations countrywide for a population of, of over 33 million. So there again, coverage was not adequate. Uh, there were areas in the country where the signals of those radio stations do not get there. Now, one interesting thing that I observed from this discussion was that mobile phones were far becoming a substitute for radio. So people rather listen to radio on their phones. And so it was difficult for a parent to leave his mobile phone with a kid while he is out and about, because he takes the phone with him, listens to radio on the phone, while, while no, can receive calls every now and again. So, it wasn't a case where, in a, in a time when we were growing up, there was a fixed radio, um, you know, in a house where you could always go turn it on, and that single purpose uh, device was used to listen to, to radio. For TV, there wasn't a high availability of TV sets, especially in the rural areas. And of course, there was an availability of uh, electricity in the house. Look at how they watch TV in some rural areas, as depicted by the pictures that, but, that I'm showing you. In other words, it wasn't all the students who had access to television sets to experience uh, what they used to call the Ghana Learning uh, TV. Then again, um, I'm sure you've seen this in some villages around, those of you from Africa, um, the horn speakers. It's become a very popular thing in this country now, where communities, especially rural communities, install these devices for announcements and to play music. Now, these are not transmitted, but they are fixed at specific locations. Now, there were people who, in the community who were keen to do their own announcements or advertisements of various products and medications, local medications. And so... to have remote location compatible devices, connectivity devices, as it is in the, in the internet backpack that can use GSM or satellite connectivity or other forms of uh, connectivity. Because in, if you talk about GSM coverage in this country, there are several locations where GSM coverage does not get to. But based on what I showed you earlier, you can, you can, you can all, all, always see that there are some rural areas with very poor internet speeds. With the electricity problem, it is important that these devices would have some kind of power, um, you know, uh, battery powered, preferably uh, uh, to, to be charged with, with solar. And it would be useful to have some of these networks 
uh, these hotspots in some kind of a closed network loop. For example, in my community in, in Winneba, Winneba is not a, a big city, it's a small town. There are outlying rural areas and there are about 13 libraries around. So if we could have these network devices connect in some kind of a, a metro network or wide area network where they can share information from various libraries and also have one contract to reduce prices of um, connectivity, that would be useful. In a broader perspective, it also will be useful to create a proper ecosystem. Obviously, the discussion has been focused on internet connectivity. However, the connectivity is one leg within an ecosystem. So uh, we should have an appropriate curricula. We should use appropriate teaching methods, um, problem project-based methods. We should um, use various methods to, you know, like augmenting um, communication between learners. We can use these devices or online teaching methods to stretch time where, you know, students, several students can uh, embark on various projects simultaneously. And they can also use it for material dissemination, collaboration learning, and other, other online teaching, teaching methods. So we should be able to train and standardize these teaching methodologies. We also should look at ways of um, enhancing access to devices. Because there again, if you have the, the connectivity, the learners must have the ability to connect to internet, and the teachers must also have ability to connect. Then, of course, school training, which is very, very important. You know, because they should know where to find materials, how to use the materials, which teaching methods, and so on and so forth. So um, this is how I bring my um, uh, short presentation to an end. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the questions, um, Dr. Kwe Adu. Um, Really looking at the role of the internet and different aspects of transforming education in developing nations, and I think, as you said, in rural communities, if you think about our impo um, impoverished, marginalized, and disenfranchised, um, that's really where the focus should be. I am going to open the floor up to um, McKnight, I'm going to present solutions based on these two case studies. And it's has to do how to attack community in Costa Rica with an internet backpack and a mic. Next slide, please. Backpack and talk about some elements that a doctor how to coordinate across a wider area and then back on. Out is cost effective. I mentioned a variety of devices inside the pack. The key at edgeware or software. And a panel, devices, cell phone, cradle point router. Um, Okay, so, um, all right, so this is honestly enough and enough that backpack video that translate 
African um, and those manage and adult how to operate internet backpack. Backpack operator, um, backpack mine to dentally round cover around a student classroom, not by it, and up to two devices. Um, our doctoral students up your lasting at 500 an internet back uh, so that's not a hard that's a design parameter uh, in addition cloud edge design uh, we also have off-grid mesh network references variety of different Finally, not much of the connectivity device is micro battery, and it's a challenge. It doesn't come with a laptop. Laptop is a lot of energy. Right now, the model comes with a cell phone, but uh, next year, uh, which So if we think about this, Max could or agriculture work, and they have all of those uh, applications, different about a dozen countries uh, since production, democratic home of all thousand. They were distant that we not just. Practically, them be their urgent. Not the only past few years. software nine of acts which are has been um so essentially we can bring as as uh, Dr. Ephraim was suggesting uh, one community other and we scale for expert uh, you don't need to act we mainly mainly where the practice have gone that's an i did i did a minute mario package ship gets video uh, Craft are there to other operate backpack. Okay, keep the angle on uh, where the most already found. Our partners, democracy, also in this COVID-19 pandemic of from four acts. <laughs> um, break them apart, basically, uh, because you don't actually satellite internet connectivity devices. Those are most expensive. You don't really want to use them unless you have, unless there's no um, uh, routers. There's no, there would be a some or path much for each. So you can, that you wouldn't pack some number. Again, we don't know those, and we're not there on the site. Exactly, or the limit. But local 
local uh, partners, democracy, this community, no alternative with the satellite internet. And in that case, being served, or the government, and one of what government, or the community had, had pleaded, acted, back, up and running. That's never been seen. Uh, okay, so uh, first I should emphasize here record. Uh, when I'm talking about affordable costs, reluctantly, I'm a co inventor. So, um, not here. Is at essentially any community about 50 ice plus the fact but that's not that's like that much I certainly nothing mine emphasize how do you have to use that's expensive, and and that's not part on the. But if you can, hours. Hotspot, and then. Local, the local. I was wearing. Government. community that they would pick thinking about this and now you have to hide us several hundred now it's a Okay, now this um uh, not magic. Not gonna solve anywhere ever. I'm gonna do more work in looking at this on the scale. Wireless broadband network. Network out there. demonstrate have these backpack endpoints are needed, but you can size of wireless wireless backbone. Access, operate. Guess what? They already active. Low down. Already be exactly all. This is education that works that grew. State. Has it have house catch up? Like, oh, but I'm not here to sell a backpack right away. Okay, so what I'm saying is with. At the end, and by twenty,
much for that, Lee, and uh, thank you to um, and Dr. F contribution. I'm going to open up the floor now to our discussants. So we've got on Samuel, a member of parliament from the Republic of Ghana, but Honorable Lugungira, a member of parliament from the Republic of Tanzania, and we've got Dr. Daniela T. Smith, College of Arts and Science of Syracuse University. I'll open up Honorable Samuel Mate George give your particular discussion. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you very much, and uh, my apologies for coming in late. Multiple sessions. I was in another session on empowerment with Nita. Um, but I think that the topic we're discussing is critical when you look at the digital gap, accessibility, and connectivity. 70% of the continent is connected. 5% of the, of the continent is accessing the network. There's that huge. And so for me, it's not just about connecting rural areas, but it's about looking at the connections and the access, affordability of the connections. And the problem with affordability is because we're using the traditional network. Using the traditional networks come at expensive cost to uh, the off takers because, for example, I use my country Ghana as an example. We used our vessel access fund is administered by a government bureaucracy called GIFEC to roll out uh, uh, a lot more of rural connectivity and rural interventions. We've won ITU awards for that with the uh, innovation. However, the question is even when you roll out this rural site, what is the uptake in terms of you? Because you then have to look at, you, you can roll out the sites. But the main questions we need to begin to question and look at is the cost standards of living in those rural areas and the disposable income, because families will not buy a data bundle as against putting food on the table. And so that's where the real challenge with rural connectivity is. It's fantastic that we can have the internet backpack, and Wisdom has shared that with me and the work Syracuse Invest is doing in that regard. It's important that we continue to support, and even as countries, begin to look at how we can use our universal access funds to deploy these services which come at cheaper cost than what your traditional networks are going to do. However, the question goes beyond that. It's one thing, and as a politician, maybe I'm not speaking as one now, politicians are interested in what we can put on adverts for the next election. And so, yes, we've connected 300 communities. Fantastic. How many of those 300 communities are actually using the network? That is where the real crux of Africa's is. Because we're seeing the intervention by Mita and and traditional networks, one minute, please. give a politician to talk, I'll talk forever. Um, you're seeing those, tra those, those, those traditional networks and Meta do Facebook for free, Instagram for free, but those are not commercially viable enterprises on the internet. If you want to use local communities and connect them to the internet, you want them to be able to learn online, e-learning platforms, YouTube videos that they will learn from, those are not free. And so those are the things that we need to begin to look at so that we don't just give them the connectivity, but we empower them to use the connectivity. That's when Africa really achieve its agenda 23, uh, 2063 and 2030. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Honorable. I think uh, you, you, you're looking at it from a very realistic point. That's really how true it's about. I'm going to open up the floor, Honorable uh, for you contributions on this particular topic. Thank you very much. Before I begin, I would like to our best from the African Jamba Um so I'm very happy to the issue of come from Kagera and, and oftentimes I find when we're all connected dialogues and I always that such me should be done in that people friends what they and oftentimes you find the people about rules. Those, in all fairness, have challenges of. Um, so there's also the need of 
it is for their voice heard in um and when we're talking about i like tanzania there was no but because they're not connected but even if this connected the connectivity better urban school and it will not be there in rural um so something that i'm trying to champion in terms of recognition i think the itu recognized that community networks is take over um access particularly last month but in most of our legislations um networks are still as commercial so i think targeted for that since it's adopted as IT in most of our countries are IT and we can critically find ways to conclude one true um rural at the issue elect access to but most important uh, the the uh because if we take computers school are our teachers are they will if we were, if we were saying we want to digitize um health system etc is our civil servants equal conversant with it these are things that we may take granted but i think we need to have an active um and a massive so campaign to ensure that we tr truly achieve connecting the last month and as my close um there's a huge there's almost a percent gap in you africa and i think in rural in areas it's 80 percent i think discussion and very happy to some of them further and i hope this discussion will end up as end up here forget about them but we'll try and make sure that implement some of these tangible actions and the African parliamentary governance to collaborate on. All of you currently have 30 uh, members, 25 African countries. So much for that contribution, all names. So I'll open up Dr. Daniela T. Um, just have you. other We're looking for allocator. Africa. I
how thank you so much for those contributions i think they're right to the point um that's a whole lot to think about and really looking at alternative methods to the infrastructural um expenses that really about that create this digital divide Close open for any questions if you could just um raise your hand and i'll acknowledge you um and then we'll take that honorable please thank you madam I realize that. The question I would like to put about the, the, the share the because those are the questions where country then maybe I didn't get you to, when you are talking the uh, like peg I was coming into the and sent a uh, person that I had just of the pack and shovel questions about the cover I said infinite let me I tried to clarify further so uh, but I'll try to do the the pack is fine bonds ideas matter what act matter someone it's not prompt bandwidth for that connection Now, if of the queue being deployed, what is the active active? If and you're able to connect directly to Wi-Fi, and you have Wi-Fi. Now it's a hot so Wi-Fi hot. Wi-Fi connecting. 5G, cell tower, connection of a 5G available, each of those individuals not, they can connect. That's what we're, available connectivity, not promise everyone, Netflix, uh, at the same time, off the pack. That's I always put out of the lights, but I. Uh, but if you're on a bulk, connect. Uh, so the range, thing on, and this. Much for that. Um, I think on that point, I'd like to encourage each and every one of you just to. Go to the booth, um, you'll get a lot of information there and, and, and ask multiple questions. That is quite an exciting product. Um, could I please uh, acknowledge you and please take the floor? I could I encourage you to yourself by name and then ask your question. Effort access just like uh, right, if then it's a chapter. 
and um how much the and a post actually having Africa rainbow Uh, more than current Next to everyone six collaborative and bring everybody at least We are able for that next generation Africa. Wait to me. Thank you much for that contribution. Um, if I could get one question on my right, please introduce you. I'm trying to be a um, but um, so first, uh, it was the real Africa and large volume actual Atlanta, near Atlanta. Uh, it's our not our what drive the product, not actual, but but still, if there was demand, that uh, we all succeed. Africa, Russian, every different country, all possible. I'll know the. Like the full, like not that's not but we have another version of the actual another version of the pack that's called the light internet backpack the satellite and that's cheap we have you can actually what we light Satellite, where the nonprofit partner. Thank you. And we are there set. Where does route how to and a pitch that needs access? Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for. Um, to the discuss discussions and uh, the questions that were put in the comments. I'm going to open up the floor to my colleague to food for us and just give us some highlighting um, and end remarks. Thank you. Thank you. From what we've been. There is need. My dream.
also to achieve um, SDS. Backpacker. Cloud management. As well, I run about content. Actually, and also from Fallout, we could mission partnership. Um, Also, there is not only connecting their lives and thank you. Thank you so much for the contribution. Thank you so much for everybody joining us today. I will conclude on that note. I think he did summarize it quite well. I do encourage you to go to the booth. I think there's this was just uh, the 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 um, top of um, session we've reached at the top. There's just so much more to learn. And on that note, I'm going to adjourn the session. Thank you very much. Uh, we have um, hello everybody. We have a, a sample of the backpack just right here. Just this. Yeah. walk. Take a look. And the literature is just right behind it, just where wisdom is standing. So take a look. Um, so I would suggest that we do that outside. There's going to be another session. Um, okay, we'll it's taking, thank, you. thank you so much. Yeah, because this one, I'm taking it towards. You can take picture of it. <laughs>